Hi there, this is Lady Shell. I um, am going to try to do a modified module creation video. It's going to be kind of on the fly where I'm building it as you watch. So um, first thing that I have to say is that to um, save your um, things that you make, your creations, your adventure, your NPCs, etc. To your Fantasy Grounds file, you are going to have to have a licensed copy of the program. You can't save in a demo. So you do not have to buy a standard or ultimate license. You could use the monthly license if you wanted to uh, build something and see if you like the way that it works. So uh, you can consider that. I will have links available to go to various resources. But we're going to start here at the loading screen. And I have uh, created a campaign already. I will show you by clicking the load. If you were creating it yourself, you would click Create. You would put a campaign name in this top box where it's pink. I'm using the 5e e roll set, so I would click 5e. E. Then there will be a variety of extensions available in this area over here. I have uh, placed a minimum of extensions because less is more. It's always best to use as little as you can so that things don't conflict. Um, so I'm going to click load and I called my campaign build basic. These are the um, extensions that I told you about that what I'm using, what would have been in that right column here. And what I've loaded is the core sidebar that just makes the banners colorful. I kind of like the look. I have loaded the Core RPG Author extension, which allows you to make a reference manual so that your module looks professional. Uh, there are other things that you could load that are good for creating modules. I'm not loading any table importers or anything um, like this. Um, I don't know how to do <laughs> commas, uh, commas, separated Whatever CSV stands for, I don't know how to do that. I build my tables right in Fantasy Grounds myself because I only have two that I probably use. Then there's an import my, uh, an import extension also uh, and a paster. Then these are all uh, the decals, which I am only loading the Fantasy Grounds College decal. I'm loading a font, which makes a larger font because I'm an older person and I like to be able to see things. So this make, gives you a larger font. And finally, I am loading this window saver, which allows you to save the windows as they were last shown in your module before you close it. So if you were using this, don't, don't shut everything down and then save because it's going to give you the, the way that you last left it. So just leave them open. So I'm going to click start and we're going to get into the campaign. And like I said, I'm just doing this on the fly. So this might be a train wreck, but uh, you are welcome to join me on this train wreck. Hold on tight. Now I apologize for the slow load. I have a fast computer, but slow internet. Okay, so I have set up my computer, I mean my desktop already to have this wider um, chat window. I don't like the text. I like to get rid of it because I don't need to see that. Campaign setup, um, I usually will just click out of this. And here's the window saver. I could click this and it's going to save where I had my combat tracker up here. So that is what that does because I left the combat tracker there and when I clicked yes it just saved that. Now I made myself some notes. Oh and I saved them down here in my safe 
area. Now, what I have done before doing uh, loading this up is I have made a simple map. And um, to load your maps, what you want to do actually is you want to make a group for your new campaign. I am going to see, you can see I have no groups in here. I'm going to call this. I click the edit and now I'm going to click the plus sign and it will always give you a group one. I'm going to rename it build underscore basic. That's what I called this campaign. So anything that I put in here is going to save to this particular folder. Again, click edit, click plus. Oh, no, don't do that. That's I forgot I was in a map. I'm going to delete this because it didn't, didn't really save anything. There are a couple different ways that you can add your images. You can go to your Fantasy Grounds uh, images in the particular campaign from your hard drive. Or you could take your maps and just drag them in, which is what I'm going to do. Now you're not seeing my uh, folders open, but I'm opening my folders from my hard drive. And I'm going to pull in the two. The, I have a map and I have a handout. So here's my handout and here's my map. It's going to be very limited because I'm just showing you some basic things. I'm going to turn off soft ed stop editing. This is the cave mount. This is a handout. I just made this crazy looking cave. This is like you're going into the cave. Now, if you look at the top here, you'll see there are two sections. This section on the left is the section that if you made it unidentified, the players could not see this after sharing it. They would only see the part that you read on the right side. That is because you might have something that says um, big bad guy inside over here, but over here it just says cave. So that means the people are only going to see where it says cave and not know that the big bad guy is inside. I'm going to call it cave mouth because it's not very um, uh, that doesn't give away that much. <laughs> it's kind of obvious as a cave mouse. Well, I will leave it as, well, you know what? No, I'm not going to leave it there because what I want to do is if you have images, say you have a lot of images. I, I'm doing a very basic module with just, you know, just the one image and the one handout. And the handout is just showing the players, hey, you're going to head into this cave. Here's what it looks like. So, on handouts, I want to give it a, um, a name called handout, comma, and then the name of the item. Now I'm going to close my lock. Again, the players will only see where it says cave mouth. I, I'm only using this for my own reference. Now this is my cave map, which is just like garbage because I don't know how to do maps very well. Um... It's a basic uh, snowy day out here and you're, you're heading into, oh, I forgot to give a door. Well, okay, that's right, because this is a t it, this is an entrance. Remember, we looked at the picture where it was a big old hole in the wall here. So that's what this looks like, even though, um, yeah, I probably should have left this without a wall. Then I have two doors here. Oh, great. My door did not go where I want it to. Well, anyway, this is not a perfect map. So um, the party will enter here to this main room and they can choose to go in this room or this room and they will have to open these doors to do so. You can see in this in this room we have three coffins and I'm going to have something jumping out of them coffins, you could be sure. And in this room we have an altar with some like glowing... Um, pedestals. See, these these have just got uh, torch like torch lights. These are like I don't know, a little fancier. But we're gonna say that uh, this is where the um, crazy cult people are gonna be. 
So we, we're going to have two encounters. So because I'm going to have two encounters, I need to make some NPCs. To make NPCs, I'm just going to borrow from the standard bestiary, SRD bestiary. So we can just open the besti bestiary, bestiary. I don't know why I call it bestiary. Probably because, I don't know. Anyway, uh, we're going to look for, how about some skeletons? Skeletons, yeah. So here's the skeleton. Now to put this in my own module. Oh, I didn't make a file yet. Wait. I need to make a group. I need to add the plus. Remember I said it makes it and calls it group one. I'm going to call this build basic. Now this is my group. Close it. Now, if I want to use the skeleton, I'm going to have to drag it off and drag it on so it disassociates from the book. You can see it made a copy. Notice there's no book that it's tied to. So now I can take this copy and I can put it in my build basic. And now when I open up that folder, I can edit the skeleton. And I'm going to open up the lock, get rid of where it says copy. And we have a token with it, which I'm going to use the token that comes with it. That's what they look like. That doesn't, oh yeah, I guess it does look like a skeleton. He has a helmet on though. Okay, so now Let's take a look at his uh, stats. He's medium undead. He's lawful evil. His Oh, he has this armor scrap. So he has an armor class of 13. He has 13 hit points. So he's not a super uh, strong skeleton. He has dark vision. Passive perception is only 9. That's not very much. He can not he, he can understand languages that it knew when it's alive, but it can't speak. It's a one quarter challenge rating, so it's not a super hard thing to kill. And here's his attacks, and it also has a short bow. Do, do we have a description? No, they didn't give you a description, but I am not uh, going to delve into that. I am just showing you things that you could do. Now, because I want to, I've got, now I have one um, NPC in my folder and let's make a ghost to go with it we'll have three skeletons and a ghost because they're not that high level so let's look up a ghost now we have to get out of my basic because all I have in my basic is the skeleton let's look for a ghost okay so again we're gonna drag it on and off or off and on rather and then I'm going to drag my copy into my build basic. I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the skeleton and open it. And there it has a spooky. <laughs> okay, it has a spooky uh, token. Let's open this up. Let's get rid of where it says copy. Let's see what this uh, ghost is like. Okay, armor class of 11. This one has more hit points. I'm only going to make one ghost. I don't want to make it too super hard. Because you can see, he's a resistant against a whole bunch of stuff. And immune to a bunch of stuff. And it can... It looks like it could talk. It has... It will uh, know languages that it knew in life. Oh, it's a challenge for... You know what? <laughs> I hope my people are ready for this because that sounds like a hard. Oh, you know what? I think the ghost is too hard for like a level three party. So I think I'm going to not use this ghost after all. We'll just uh, go with the with the skeletons. So to delete this, I will just click on the delete and we will just go with three skeletons. Whoops. And we'll close that so it doesn't mess up. Okay, we still need stuff for the other room. These are where the um, acolyte, uh, not acolytes, the cultists are going to be. So let's go back into the bestiary, bestiary. Look up some cultists. I think the cultist is uh, less hard than the fanatic. I'm thinking the fanatic is probably harder. Let's see. Oh yeah, cultist, nine hit points. Okay, so this this 
guy here looks too hard for my party. I do have an, a token. And it's a 1 8th. It can't be charmed or frightened. And it has leather armor. Okay. Now, remember I said that you need to drag it on and off. We have a copy now. We're, we can drag this into our best into our build basic. And now I can open this up. And I can get rid of where it says copy. And these people will be in the other room. Okay, so now I have a couple different NPCs. I have maps. And I have NPCs. Um, what, uh, we'll actually only have the one map. Now, when you start your adventure, you're going to have to you, grid your map. It's already unlocked. So I'm going to grid this now. And to do this, I will right click, I'll click layers, I will click grid, and we will say that, oh, I can't even read that. There we go. I want it to be about 50. 62. Maybe I should, yeah, I should probably go in the dark so I can see. Okay, 58, 53, there, 50. Okay, so we have a grid of 50, which is good. And um, now I have down here about the fact that your um, image sizes should be no larger than 700 by 1,000. That would be for your handout. My handout, I believe, is 700 by 700. And my maps can be up to 2,048 by 2,048. This is a map. I did not notice how big I made this. Let's make sure. I, did. I don't think I made it that big. I'm going to look this up on my hard drive. You can't see me doing this, but I'm looking it up on my hard drive to see how big this map is. This map is 1500 by 1250. So it's well within the range of sizes for maps that you could use in the game. And you can see that I can move around the screen by clicking on this. And I could go, I'm holding the left mouse button and you, well, if I made it smaller, you could go from left to right and up and down. So we have our map open. We have it gridded. And what else do I need? Okay, I have my maps. I have this and I have tokens, which I haven't had to create any tokens because the tokens are on the actual NPC. So I'm not going to worry about tokens. <clears throat> it does say if you do, if you do for some reason have a, an NPC that has a letter token or something, you don't want to use a letter token, you can make your own tokens. And I recommend, um, Using royalty-free artwork, unless you're going to draw it yourself. And if you don't know how to draw it yourself, or you don't want to draw it yourself, you could go to Pixabay, which I have a link here, to make your tokens. And uh, all the uh, images on there are royalty-free, so you can use them to make your own adventure. Um, and then this Roll Advantage website is where I actually make the tokens. I think I have some tokens. These are tokens that I made for another module. This is like my centipede. And then I made the frog. I've got this aquan, which is a race that I'm making. Here's the, the num these are the things that are in the bestiary. All the different ones. So you notice that some of them are letter tokens, but I didn't get uh, NPCs with letter tokens. So, um, oh, I could, let me show you how you would change out your token. If you didn't like the skeleton and you want to use different skeletons, say I made a skeleton, which I don't have a skeleton, but let's, let's just change it out for, for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. All you do is grab the token. These are loose tokens. As you should see, these are loose. These are a uh, associated with a particular module. 
So this is if you were making tokens yourself and you and you want your tokens included in your module, you'll leave them loose like this. So I'm going to take this token, pretending that this is the token that I want to use, and you leave it open and you drag it down. Sometimes it's finicky. There. It has to go like right on top of where the token was and then you would close it. But I don't want to use Tyra. <laughs> I want the skeleton back. Let me go back to the SRD and look up the skeleton. How come I can't find the skeleton now? Hmm. There he is. Okay, I'm putting him back there. Okay, so we got the original thing back. You know how to change your tokens. Now we need to make, I told you, each one of these that you use a type of uh, content, you need to make a story and you need to make a group for each one. Again, we're using build basic. And now this is where I'm going to start my story entries. Uh, when I first started making modules, I thought the first thing you're going to do is enter your story, but that is not correct. The first thing you do is get your assets, your maps, your tokens, your image, uh, well, your other images that you may be using, your NPCs, and you're going to make a group for each one, like I said. Every Everyone enters the same way. You click edit, you click the plus, and it makes a entry. Another important thing for making stories is to start with uh, numbering. And you do this because if you had um, written a title here, it will put things in alphabetical order rather than in maybe the order that you want it to be in. So to do that, you would start with 00.00, .00 helps to turn the number lock on, 00.00, .00 and then first, I'm just going to say first page. This is probably not what you would want to say, but I'm giving you an example. And um, I would describe my... Um, module, what it's about, what my story's about, and if I had any credits where I had commissioned work, I would put a credit to the person that I commissioned their work on this page. And when you're done with it, then you would go on to the next page, which will be... zero zero point zero one. And we're going to call this second page. Cat block. <laughs> okay. Second page. Close that for now. Now, since the first page just uh, dealt with credits and things like that, the second page is going to be the beginning of your story. So you would uh, describe how your in my particular story here, my players are going to head up, not to the mouth, they're going to head up to this dungeon because um, I have no idea why, <laughs> but they're going to head up to this dungeon and then they're going to enter into this first room and then they're going to decide, do they want to go left or right? Because there's doors to either side or an exit from the cave. So, now that I've gridded my map, I could show you, I'm going to call this story into the second page is going to be, I'm going to link this second page here. And you see it made a red pin. This is going to tell you what happens here. Every time you have a new story entry, I will have another story entry here. I will have another story entry here. And I will have another story entry here. So I will have three more red pins. So let's open these up. 
This is going to be third page, 00 0.02. I didn't call it third page. I put the 00. zero. Shelly. Okay, this goes up here. Zero, zero, zero point zero 0.02. third page and this will be when you first enter this room and then we're going to have a fourth page 0, 0 0.03 fourth page and the fourth page will link to the room with the uh, coffins. So we'll drag this over here. And then we're going to have a fifth page. This will be the final page because I'm just making a sample module here. 0, 0, 0, 0.04, fifth page. And we're going to drag this over to the cultists. Okay, now, what else do we want on our page? Well, obviously, we're going to want to have some text. I'm not going to add anything additional to my first page. We will start with second page, which is this room here. Oh, that's third page. This, are, sorry, second page. This is where you meet the person that's going to give you the quest. So you will make your description, and let's let we're going to have to make an NPC because... Uh, Somebody has to give you this quest. We're going to look up in the bestiary and try and find who's going to give you this. Well, don't think an assassin's going to give you <laughs> something. How about a commoner? Okay, we're going to make a commoner. Again, drag it off, drag it on, and then we can drag it into our best uh, into our build basic. And now he may be a commoner. He does have a token, but we're not going to call him commoner. We're going to call him uh, Jed Hammer, and Jed Hammer is the one who's going to give you your quest. And we'll just keep his stats here because we're not fighting him. He's giving us a quest. You know what? I'm going to say Jed Hammer quest giver. Okay. So now we have that set. You would want to give him a little more description. I'm being very basic because this is just showing you how to put the pieces together for the module, not how to actually write the module. That's up to your creative juices. And this was the second page, which is this. Uh, you're going to meet him. So since we are meeting him, we're going to have to put him... Here, Jed Hammer, Quest Giver, and we're going to make an encounter because to put him on the map, we have to, well, I guess you don't have to make an encounter, but we're going to make an encounter. It's not going to be an encounter where we're going to fight him. It's going to be just an encounter where he's going to give you the quest. Okay, so again, we called it Build Basic. We go into Build Basic, we open this up, and we're going to make our first encounter. Our first encounter is with Jed Hammer. So we're going to take him and we're going to drag him into the encounter. And we're going to call the encounter Jed Hammer. Oops, Hammer. Okay. Now if this was uh, something where I was uh, having several different... Um, people as part of the quest you would drag however many NPCs into this encounter and then you could change the number here since Jed Hammer is an individual we're going to leave him at 1 and we are going to change his threat level to friendly so now he's going to show up green in the combat tracker 
I am going to now preload him. Now to preload your NPCs for your encounter, you first have to link to the page where they are found on your uh, story entry. Also, another thing with the story entry, we need to know where is Jed Hammer. We, we know Jed Hammer is on this dungeon map, so we're going to drag the map over here too. So now we have links from the map to Jed, well, to the, it's, this is to the encounter, and we have a link to the um, story entry which is what I got here. Now, dungeon map, I want you to say that it is an image so that I know what the heck dungeon map is. I mean, it's kind of obvious that it's a map, but anyway. So dungeon map is this map. It's really good to um, link back and forth. So I'm linking these two things to, to the map, and then I'm linking the maps back to the page and the encounter. Now, I've got my um, story entry done. I've got uh, Jed Hammer's encounter here on the map. He's a zero <laughs> for a CR level. Now, to put him on the map, down here where it says placement, we're going to, whoa, let's grab him. And we're going to place him on the map. I'm placing him right here just before the entry to the tunnel. So we see he's on the map. Now what you want to do is close this because we're done with this. And you'll watch when I close it, he goes away. But he is still here until you bring him back by loading him onto the combat tracker by clicking this down arrow. We're not going to do that yet. Well, I already have him linked. I don't need to. I was going to save him down here. Okay, so we have him linked. Now, this room is just going to be the description. And on this pin, which is linked to your story entry, you would write the description of this room. Oh, it's dark. It's kind of smoky from the t torches. And you see doors to the um, east and west. What will you do? We don't have an encounter in this room. So the only thing that we need to link... And I'm not going to write description here. I'm just going to type description of room. Okay. And the, we're going to say the people go, they're, they're going to choose either to go to the Acolyte's room or they're going to go over here to the Skeleton's room. Now, we have the page loaded. This is description of the room. We'll go here, plus we're going to have our skeletons in this room. And if we're having the skeletons in this room, we're going to need an encounter with the three skeletons. So let's build our encounter. Close this up. We're going to call this Trio of Skeletons. And we, we grab our NPC. We grab our skeleton, put them over here, close that. And we want three of them, so we're going to change this to three. Notice now there's three um, to tokens under here. Now, again, I'm going to load, preload my skeleton encounters. I'm going to have them be on the far side behind their coffin. And you see how it made a check mark when I loaded it? This shows you that you have... Um, loaded your preloaded your uh, NPCs and we have a CR level of one with these three skeletons again close that they go away but they are preloaded so that when it's time to do that in the story you would do the down arrow and add the skeletons the final thing is going to be the acolytes that's this page and we're going to describe the Alkalites room.
No, it's not acolytes. They were cultists. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I forgot to add the skeletons here. Because we described the room, but we did not give it a the encounter that we created. So we're going to put the... Oh, that is not where I wanted that. <clears throat> I want the skeleton encounter down here. And I'm going to call it encounter. Tree of skeletons. Okay, and... Uh, should we get something from killing the skeletons other than experience? I think so. I'm going to say inside one of these coffins, you find some treasure. Now, where there's treasure, there are parcels. So we will open the parcels. Again, we are going to make a group. We're going to call the group Build Basic. And we're going to build, an, uh, we're going to build a parcel. Click edit, click the plus sign, and we are going to say skeleton stash. Okay, let's uh, say there are 50 gold pieces in, in the coffin, because I guess when they died, they were rich. And we're going to have to add some kind of uh, items. So we're going to open our items. We're not building items. I'm grabbing these items from the data. If I wanted to build items, I would make a build, you know, build my own, uh, just like I've done here with build, I would make a group called Build Basic. And I could take an existing item and change it up and put it into my Build Basic and it would be like a custom item. That's how you make all your custom stuff is to put them in their own group. We're not going to do this. We're just going to use general stuff. So what's going to be in this? Maybe. Now nah, we're not going to find a backpack. Bagpipes. Bead. Bedroll. A bell. Here, let's put a bell. For some reason, a bell got left behind. Um... You know what? Let's find this weapon. Maybe this guy, this skeleton was an assassin and he had a blowgun and he had needles where his blowgun. So you find some weapons that maybe your um, rogue might be happy to have. At least I hope so. Let's see. Ammunition. That's not ammunition. Wait, did I call that the wrong thing? Oh no, that's the weapon. Okay. It takes ammunition and the ammunition goes 25 to 100. Okay, so he left his bell and his blowgun. And how about some boots? Yeah, let's we'll have the the four B's in this thing. And we have the 50 gold. And since he was a an assassin, he's going to have a burglar's pack. Oh my god, I should not have done that. That's what you do when you build a character. I suppose this is his backpack. He left his backpack. And he has candles and he's got rations, pitons, rope, string, tinderbox, and even a water skin. Baby, the water is poison though. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to close the um, things down so that we don't mess it up. This is going to be inside this cough, one of the coffins. Uh, wait a minute. Did I just build that and then I didn't? Oh, no, that's part of the parcel. Never mind. Here's the skeleton stash. Now, again, you want to link this to the room because you're going to find it in this room. Whoops, I put it too high. Okay, so that's the stash that you get if you defeat the skeletons. Okay, so now we've built a we built an NPC. Well, we didn't build them, but we placed an NPC. We placed a parcel. And we're ready to move on to the acolyte. I mean not acolytes, cultus. And the cultus are gonna be 
wait, let's grab them. Here's our cultus. We need to make an encounter. So we're going to open our encounters again. We're going to open a new one and we are going to put cultus in here. Let's say there are three of them. So we're going to say three. We're going to say cultist. And then we're going to replace them. Now we've already got our page here. This is the page for the cultist room. We are going to have to um, link this encounter that I'm building that I haven't called it anything yet. Oh, well, I called it cultist, but I haven't finished it. Let's close it. So now it's called cultist. We're going to add it to this page because this is the encounter with the cultist encounter. And then uh, we'll probably have some um, loot over here. So where are these cultists going to be? I'm going to say one of them's praying at the altar. And this guy is probably down here. I don't know what he's doing. And this guy's going to be up here. So there's our. Oh, let me open it again. There, this is a one half. Okay, so there's your three cultists. And I want to make a parcel for what you find on the cultists. Let's build the parcel. We're going to call this cultus. Cultist treasure. Ah, I'm going to call it cultist loot. Okay, so um, they are not super rich, so they're only going to have 25 silver. And let's give them some items. They are going to have some candles because, yeah, they're all about like lighting candles and pray into their gods. Let's give them five candles. Let's give them what else should we give them? Well, I'm thinking that these are going to be on the cultists themselves. So what did the NPCs have for as far as weapons? It says that they, they have a scimitar. So probably would get scimitars, right? Let's load up, uh, look for scimitar. And let's say each one of them has a scimitar. And then they have some candles. Uh-oh. You know what? That is incorrect. You cannot drag your stuff out or it'll be attached. Oh, that's right. I wasn't making my own. Um... Oh, shoot. Yes, I was. Well, it, c it could come out of the book because I'm not making it a, a specific item. These aren't custom items. These come directly from the SRD. So it's fine for me not to drag it out, drag it back because I don't have a subgroup. Okay, so we have, each of them has a scimitar, they have candles, and what else? they they got to have something better than that. Well, hey, they are cultists, so they're going to have an alms box, because that's where they collect their money when they, you know, have their meetings and stuff. Let's say they have an amulet, too. I mean, I'm sure that they are you know, have a holy symbol for their god. List the symbols, blah, blah, blah. And what else will they have? I told you this was going to be sp just uh, <laughs> spur of the moment and figure it out when I get there. Um, how about a disguise kit? Yeah. Somebody's got a disguise kit. And let's look at the next page. 
Well, we're not going to have a donkey in here. Dust? What the heck is dust? It's adventuring gear. Hmm, I guess you throw it in someone's face, maybe. Let's have somebody has an emblem. Maybe they were part of, uh, like, uh, some kind of faction. Is that what this is? Oh, that's a, never mind. Emblem is similar. Okay, one of them's got an emblem and one of them's got a amulet. And what the heck is exotic? Oh, that's some kind of stuff you put on your horse. Um, oh, figurine. Of course you're going to have figurines. Because it's an altar, right? So they probably have figurines of their god. So we'll put one of those in there. And how about a couple of gems just to make things? We'll put five gems so maybe the party can have something decent. And headband. This stuff isn't very descriptive, is it? <laughs> um, well, shoot, it's an altar, so we're going to have some holy water. Wait a minute. No, we're not going to have holy water because they're probably evil. Isn't holy water good? Let's see. Uh, splash this. Yeah, this this <laughs> this would be bad for the skeletons. Yeah, this we're not going to have holy water. So I'm going to delete that. Uh, hourglass. Sure, why not? Hourglass. So there's a bunch of interesting stuff. And incense, that fits too. Let's put three incense. Okay, so we got enough treasure in this room. We're going to load the parcel up here. So now we have a link to the story entry and a link to the parcel. Or wait a minute, was this an encounter? Yeah, that's the story entry. We also need a link to the encounter, which is this. Oh, no, it isn't. Sorry, that's the NPCs. This is the encounter. Okay, we need to link the... I've already put place these people. And I don't want to place the pin right on the person because I remember I put the guy right there. Let's put them down here. I know nobody's standing there. Okay, so we have our pins to say the story entries. This one is the story entry, which just describes this room. This one is the um, entry that describes the room, and it has a... Oh, we didn't put the um, encounter. We have to put the encounter. So we have a description of the room, we have the encounter itself, and we have uh, the parcel. Same thing over here. We have the description of the room. We have the encounter and then the loot that you get when you fight them. So let's close that up. Close that up. And now I would I would suggest if you're making a one shot that you make that you make some um, pregens for your people to use. If this is going to be a campaign that you're building, I would allow your players to come in and take them uh, bit by bit. Don't have all all of your party in at the same time because it'll be too chaotic. You want to give the people time each each one separately, and you're going to describe have them describe what kind of character they want to make, and you're going to help them build their character. And then find out what the they have in mind for their background, because maybe you can use their background as part of your story. Now, you wouldn't in this, because this is just a sample module. So, let's see. So, we've got our images. Oh, tables. Well, I didn't um, make any tables. I guess, okay, Here, here's a way to make a table. I mean, this is the first thing that I can think of. It's pretty lame, but <laughs> let's go down here to group one. We're going to call it build basic. And we're going to click and we're going to go there. We're going to make a table. This is how I'm making a table. I'm going to call this which direction? Because you remember when you come into this room here, 
you need to know are the people going to go to the east to the west or the east so which direction question mark we're going to have <clears throat> a d10 and we're going to do one through five and then six through ten so um one through five will take you to the ah i keep uh, closing the wrong thing one through five will take you to this this room here and six through ten will take you through the come on quit closing down oh no i dragged my pin fifth page okay fifth page is going to go over here now why did that not go oh crap where did i just drag my pin that was good Close that. Where'd I drag my pen? Guess I'm going to have to open the room back up again. That was, let's see, fourth page. I think it was the fifth. No, fifth page is cultist room. Fourth page. Okay, fourth page is where the skeletons are. Nope, that's not what I want. It's the second page. Second page. Nope, that's where this guy is. I'm really on the ball here. Third page is this room. Oh, no, wait. Hold on. I do have third page. No, we were going to make it. Yeah, you're right. It was uh, cultist. That's the encounter. We're, we're supposed to be linking to 004, I believe it is. Yeah, no. Skeletons was to the left. Yes. Encounter with the cultists. Okay, let's put the cultists back here. And we want to link this to that page. There. Now we've got it. So we will do a random roll here. When the players come in, the DM will do a roll, a secret roll that they can't see. And that, that will decide which direction they go. And they're going to go to the cultist room first. So that's how you would make a random, well, yeah, would make a random table. You can use tables for anything, but that was the first thing that I thought of as far as what I can make in this basic thing. And you don't have to give it a dice you, you could just put whatever. I could put 1 through 10 and 11 through 20 and not put a dice. And it would roll a d20 to see which direction they go. Or you could do 1 through 1, 2 through 2, and it would only roll a two-sided dice. So that is how you make a table. And I have it built into my Build Basic section. Now, what else do I have? I'm not going to make a quest. I have NPCs. I have encounters. I did not make any custom items. I made a parcel. And all these things are basically for when you build a character. So, I think we are ready to export our module. First, you want to save. Because Fantasy Grounds does save every five minutes. But you don't know when that five minutes was. It could be four minutes and 59 seconds ago. And I did a whole lot in that last four minutes and 59 seconds. So maybe that wouldn't have been saved. Okay, so I saved that. The, to export your file, you're going to do backslash and type export. And you'll get this module export. You're going to have to give it a file name. We're going to call it build basic and we need a thumbnail this is optional it kind of is be best to give it some kind of thumbnail because if you don't uh, you will have a um, you will have a file where it's blank there and it looks kind of dumb let's see I'm gonna find myself some some uh, 
PNGs. Okay, I'm going to use some random creature art. No, I guess I'm not going to use that. That's a zip file. I will just put this. This is my thing. Oh, wait. Is that going to let me do that? Whoops. I do I Where is it opening? Did it Oh, I bet it opened in my <sighs> Really? Nope, it didn't open there. I don't even know where it opened. Let me go back to my thing cuz obviously it didn't I thought I could drag it in here, but Oh, I know. What is wrong with me? Okay, let me go back. Let me go to artwork. And this is where I'm going to do it. And I was going to give it this file name, art01. Oh, now it... Darn it. I don't want it. It loaded up my... Um, Shop Pro. Oh, this is like a dwarf guy, this picture that I'm making. Um, okay, so let's start with name. We're going to... Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Excuse me, I'm being a derf. Now I'm going to load this uh, little dwarf guy here. Nope, not a map. Artwork. Okay, so this is my, this is my asset. This is what's going to display this little dwarf guy. Now I'm going to call it Build Basic for a name. And its category, we're going to say it's a game, adventure. And author's name is me. And what assets did I use? Now you see there's a list of assets. You can collect all of them. Or you can just click which ones that you have. I know I didn't make any backgrounds, classes, effects. I did make encounters. I didn't make feats. I have images and maps. I have no custom items. I don't have any mod <coughs> modifiers. I have NPCs. I have parcels. Whoops. Come on. Clicking the wrong thing. I have um, I have some pre generated characters did I load them in here no I did not load them in here so I'm, uh, since I didn't do that I'm not gonna click that I didn't click quests or races and reference manual I'm gonna click okay uh, I didn't make any skills or spells I did make story entries and I did make a table and if I had tokens that I was using you would drag these ones here into your let's just drag the B for reference that's how you would do it you would drag your token that you made yourself and drag it here now when this exports when you look at it you will have a bag that's labeled build basic and it will have this B in it let's give them let's give them one more thing Let's give them um, a frog. Oops. Frog. Sometimes this does not want to drag. There. Okay. So now we have a bee and a frog. Now we're going to click export. And it says it was exported successfully. So now I'm going to go and exit out of this. And go back to the... Actually, you know what? I'm going to... No, I think I, I have to ex exit my to the launcher. And go back to the launcher. And I'm going to load my campaign. And it's build basic. Start. Now, this probably wasn't... This is the reason why you make a build. Because when you want to run the game... You don't want two copies of it in the same folder. So basically, I should not have loaded the same one that I created in. Because that is like your um, full, that's like your campaign that, that stays the way it is forever. 
and then when you actually run your campaign if you make changes that is in a separate folder so I'm gonna say no I'm gonna exit again I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna pick a different folder to open it in so that it doesn't pick up the same thing twice we're gonna go into build campaign one I don't know what that is but we'll go there and that way it won't have like duplicate entries and again it takes a little while to load because I have slow internet I apologize for that Okay, so I'm going to click out of that. Oh, and you can see I don't have the same um, things loaded. It looks like nothing's really here. And I left the dice tower open. Okay, so I'm going to load. Let's get rid of all the stuff that's loaded. Wow, I got a lot of stuff loaded. Let me unload all this stuff. Because I only want to load the module itself. No wonder it took a while to load. It had all this stuff to load. Almost there. Now, the only thing that I want to load is what I just created. It's build basic. This is a little graphic. And you see the little um, token bag? That will have that little bee and the frog in it. So let's load this up and see what we got. So you see I have a reference manual. That's going to be like this. And I did not. It's kind of like you're reading a book. It would be better if I had actual content, which I didn't really build the actual content. But that's what a reference manual, manual looks like. And then here are my encounters. Here are my images. Here are my NPCs. Here are my story entries. And my tables. Table. And my parcel. So these are all the parts of my module. You probably want to start with the page. And you can use the arrow keys to uh, scroll through your things. Remember, I'm not going to really have anything here because I didn't really give it much description. But that's where you would have all your information. You would have your links to your modules. I'll show you how the... Um, encounter loads. Now, this see, this was a mistake. I should have linked this to the page with the, with the cultist besides the encounter. So I need to go to fifth, well, that is the fifth page. I need to go to the map. Nope, not that map, this map. Okay, and it was uh, this, nope, that's that page. Oops. I want the encounter. We need to load the encounter to that page. I'm going to open, the, unlock it, drag over the, let's make a return. And this is, oh wait, I already have the, okay, that was a mistake. No, I didn't want the encounter. I wanted the map. Ah, uh, there map there now we have a map and we have the encounter for the map so let me close this again let me load the map let me reduce the size
Now, the encounter is with the cultists over here. To put them on the combat tracker, all you do is hit the down arrow. There's your three cultists. You can see that I have them on the map here. Why is that cultist like half off the map? <laughs> That's not very good. Okay. So the these are invisible. That is what it looks like when it's visible. See how, how it uh, showed up here? But the players will not see these. I can see them because I'm the DM. So that is loaded there. Let's load the dun the uh, skeletons too. Why not, right? Open the encounter. Did I have the... Please tell me I have the skeletons here. Yes, I, no, that's the stash. Yes, I do. Okay, again, down arrow loads the skeletons preloaded spots. And then uh, let's load Jed Hammer. Why not? Remember, he's a good guy. He's green. So that is where he loads, right there. We meet him before we go inside. So that is how you would load your encounters. And then they stay invisible until it's time for you to make them visible with however your story is written. So I think that is all that I need to tell you about this. I will have additional links to um, some resources for making your own NPCs or your tokens and where you could get um, free images to use to make your artwork for your tokens, how to make your tokens, uh, the website to that I use to make the tokens. And I hope this was uh, helpful for you because it was kind of uh, crazy, I will admit, but I hope that it, you enjoyed watching me um, make a module on the fly. And that is all I have to say. I will talk to you another time. I hope to see you in Fantasy Grounds College soon. Thank you for watching.